بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ما شاء الله beautiful مسجد beautiful community and ما شاء الله beautiful faces faces of sujood and ruku' and qira'at al-Qur'an ahl al-Qur'an wa ahl al-Masajid simahum fi wujuhihim min athari sujood mashallah this is a nur and light of the sujood and ibadah and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ahlam wa sahlam bikum fi baytim min biyuti Allah actually this is not a dars or khutbah or presentation because um, my English is not perfect, not very good. I'm still uh, learning English, ESL. So pl please forgive me if there is any uh, mistake in my, my talk or correct me also. And this is only some advices for our brothers and sisters. Nasa'ih. From Muslim to Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, ta'muruna bil ma'roofi wa tanhawna anil munkari wa tu'minuna billah. Close meaning of this ayah, you are the best nation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you to the people as an example and also to enjoy good and for forbid evil and wrong and to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's saying kuntum khayra ummatin you are the best ummah you are the best nation ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is not my speech or someone or mufassireen or ulama, no. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I say that or you say that, it might be, you know, something fanaticism or, you know, tribalism or nationalism because you say that I'm the best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created the whole universe, He is saying, Kuntum khayra ummatin. You are the best ummah. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, Antum tutimmuna sab'ina ummah. Antum khayruha wa akramuha ala Allahi azza wa jal. You are... The completion of 70 nations, 7 zero. You are the best of them and the most honorable of them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are Ummah number 70. There were 69 Ummahs before us. Ummah Nuh, Ummah Ibrahim, Ummah Isa, Ummah Musa, Ummah Lut, Ummah... Ilyasin, Ummat Yunus, alayhim salatu wa salam, jami'an. 69 Ummah. And we are Ummah number 70. There is no Ummah number 71. We are the last Ummah. Nothing after us except Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Akhirul Ummah. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أنتم توفون سبعين أمة أنتم خيروها وأكرمها على الله عز وجل. He mentioned this hadith actually when he was reciting this ayah كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس as an explanation of this ayah. Why we are the best أمة? Is that because we have we are rich? We are a lot big number. Or we have a lot of things and material. Khayra Ummah for three conditions. Qala ahadu sahaba 
مَن لَمْ يُكْمِلْ شَرْطَ اللَّهِ فِيهَا فَلَيْسَ مِنْهُمْ If you don't complete the condition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the best, to be the best of this ummah will not be among, among those people. The number one, تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Advise each other. Order each other to do good. Your wives, your husbands, your children, your neighbors, your friends, your relatives, your people that you know. Amr bil ma'roof. وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And forbid evil and wrong. When you see wrong thing in your home, with your friends, your relatives, people at the masjid, you have to say something. If you have ability to say something, to say this is wrong and this is right, and you don't say, then you are a partner of that wrong. You are a partner of that mistake. You have to say something. Of course, بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ With good words, soft words. بِالْحِكْمَةِ no? With wisdom. My dear brothers and sisters, the third one is وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ And to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of us خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ we need to know that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for a great purpose. Let me give you an example. A shepherd, he found a baby lion in the desert. So he take the baby lion, huh? to raise him and to take care of him with his sheep until the lion, mashallah, become, you know, became big. And... But he spent the whole time with the sheep, eats grass and drink water like them and say, ma, like sheep, and walk like them and sleep with them and everything like sheep. Once a real Lion wanted to attack the flock of the, uh, the sheep. And he saw a lion between them. Amazed. What's that? So he called them. He said, hey, come here. He said, no, you're going to eat me. No, I'm not, I'm not going to eat you. You are a lion. You are like me. I cannot eat you. No, I'm not a lion. I'm a sheep. See, I eat grass with them, I drink with them, I sleep with them, and I act like them, and I say, ma like them. You know, I'm a sheep. No, you are a lion. No, I'm a sheep. Okay, can you please come with me? I will give you a proof that you are a lion. So he took him to a well and told him to look in the water. Look at your face and my face in the water. Your face, like my face. You are a lion. You are not like them. If you go back to them now and you say, ah, like a lion sound, they will run away from you. Because you are a lion. This is just an example to tell our brothers and sisters who celebrate like others. We have too many celebrations, right? Christmas and this and that. And when you celebrate like them, brother, sister, you are a lion. You are not like them. You act like a lion. Kuntum khayra ummatin. You are the best ummah. No, I am sheep. I eat like them. I drink like them, I sleep like them, I act like them, 
I celebrate like them. Those are my role models, my example. Brother, sister, you are a lion. You're not allowed to do things like them. No, I'm a sheep. Some people insist. They don't say it by their tongue, but their action. You know? Why you have these tattoos in your face, in your hands? Why you have earrings and wrong things? You are a lion. You are not supposed to do that. No, I'm a sheep. I'm happy to be sheep. Sister, why don't, why don't you wear hijab? Why act like others? Because I'm a sheep. MashaAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you in the highest status. Khayra ummatin. Khayra ummatin. The best. And you said, no, I don't want to be the khayra. I want to be like them. Our role models, Ashabu Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those people, our ancestors, our grandfathers and mothers, our examples. Let me give you an example of one of the Sahaba, a young Sahabi. A tribe came to Prophet sallallahu they accepted the Islam, all of them. And you know Arab tribe long time ago? Hundreds of people in one tribe, 500, 1,000, 2,000, big number. All of them became Muslim. And Prophet ﷺ told them, لِيَ أُمُّكُمْ أَحَدُكُمْ لِيُؤَذِّنْ لَكُمْ أَحَدُكُمْ وَلَيَ أُمُّكُمْ أَكْبَرُكُمْ One of you give adhan in the time of adhan, but the one who has most, he has half of Quran, he is the one should lead the Salah. The leaders of that tribe, they said, we looked around, we didn't find except a young man. And we appointed him to be an, an imam of that tribe. Because he is the one who has half of Quran, and he knows more ahkam in masail of fiqh, fiqh al-tahara, fiqh al-wudu, fiqh al you know, fiqh al-salah, fiqh al-iqtisal, all these purification ahkam, he knows. So they appointed him to be an imam. Do you know the age of that young man? In the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, he was six years old. Can you please repeat it? How old? Six years old. An imam of the whole tribe. This boy is an example and role model for our young man. Not Superman or huh? so, SpongeBob or what else? Huh? Spider-Man. Huh? We think about these things, they are not, they are fake. The real Example, example of Sahaba radiallahu anhum wa arda. Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa appointed him to be a leader for an army going to fight the strongest empire in the world. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. His name, Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu. In that time. To fight the Roman. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away while Usama radiallahu anhu in his army preparing themselves to go for jihad fi sabilillah. Then Sahaba, some of the Sahaba came to Abu Bakr, Khalifa of Rasulullah, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, Ya Khalifa ta Rasulullah, please, can you... Um, exchange someone to be a leader of the army instead of uh, Osama because he's young. 
17, 18 years old. How old? 17. High school kid. Leader of the army. Allahu Akbar. And who told him to be the leader? Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr Siddiq, the old man, over 60 years, he was Khalifa in that time, and Amir al Mu'mineen, he was walking next to Usama when Usama was riding his ride. And the Khalifa walked. So Usama radiallahu anhu, out of respect, he said, Ya Khalifa Rasulullah, la tarkabanna aw la anzilanna. Either you ride like me or I get down. So Khalifa radiallahu anhu says, Wallahi la tanzilanna wa wallahi la arkabanna. By Allah, you will not get down and I will not ride. Wa ma alayya anu ghabbira qadamiyya fi sabirillah. Wa ma alayya anu ghabbira qadamiyya sa'atan fi sabirillah. He was walking next to Usama to say goodbye. And he said, What's wrong if I walk in the path of Allah for a few minutes so the dust can come on my feet to be a barrier between me and Jahannam? Maghbarrat qadama abdin fi sabirillah fatamassahu nar. That's Usama radiallahu anhu. Those people are our role models, our examples. Act like them, do like them. Read their stories for your families, for your kids. Instead of fake stories and fake names. One of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum was an invitation in the castle of Roman. Huge castle of the king. Group of Sahaba were eating with kings and ministers and leaders. And one of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, while he's eating, the morsel, the bite, dropped from his hand. So he took it and he removed the harm of it and he ate it. You know hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa if any one of you drops a morsel, take it, clean it, eat it, and do not leave it for the shaitan. This is out of respect of ni'mah and bounty of Allah. And also it creates humbleness in our heart to be humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawadu' lillah. So Sahabi radiallahu anhu practiced this sunnah in that very sensitive situation. The other Sahaba was next to him, so he poked him like this. Hey, why are you embarrassing us in front of those people? A lot of food in front of you. Don't you there are kings and, and leaders sitting in front of you? What are they going to say about us? So the other Sahabi, he replied to him in a low, loud voice. Oh my God. Do you want me to leave the sunnah of my Habib, my beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, for those stupid people? Front of them. Sunnah Habibi. It's not fard. It's not wajib. It's not sunnah mu'akkada. It's only sunnah. They refuse to leave even one sunnah. Don't be shy, my dear brothers and sisters, to mention your name, Muhammad, Ahmad, in front of everyone. His name is Muhammad, but he, wa he wants people to call him Mo. Brother Mo, you are a lion. No, I'm a sheep. I am Mo. You are a lion. Allah made you a lion. And you want to be mo and sheep? Why you are shy to pray in front of others and make wudu in front of others? 
Once I was traveling, I, I don't know, Amsterdam or somewhere in Europe. So I was preparing myself to pray in the airport. So one of the people, he passed by and he, and he said, S -s -s. So I heard only seen letter. So I realized that he wants to say, Salamu alaikum. But he, do, he doesn't want to say it out loud. So I replied to him, S -s -s. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> then I called him, I said, Brother, are you are Muslim? He said, Yes. Please come pray with me. He said, Inshallah, Inshallah. Don't be shy to say Salamu Alaikum. <laughs> Don't be shy to make wudu. When you travel somewhere, when you're traveling in a rest area or parks or um, you know, malls, pray anytime and make adhan prayer or salah. What's gonna happen? A farmer guy, he took his rooster once and he told him, O oh, rooster, you are disturbing me all the time. You keep making noise. Coo -coo -coo. You know, you are disturbing my sleep. You know, Prophet ﷺ named the rooster Al Mu'addin. Right? In the hadith. The rooster in the hadith called Al Mu'addin. The Mu'addin, the one who gives adhan. Because he gives adhan at the time of each salah, subhanallah. And when you hear the rooster saying um, a sound, you should say, Allahumma inni as'aluka min fadlik. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his mercy, fa'innahu ra'a malakan. Because he sees um, an angel. So the, the rooster is mu'adhin. So the guy took the rooster and told him, hey, if you give adhan, or you do this sound again, I'm going to kill you. So the rooster says, okay, 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 sorry. I'm not going to do it again. Then after a while, he took the rooster and said, hey, when you walk, don't raise up your head like this between the chicken. You have to walk like them, your head down. He said, okay, okay, I will do that. After a while, he took him and he told him, Every day you must give me an egg. If you don't do that, I'm going to kill you. So it's impossible to give an egg. So the rooster said, Laytahu zabahani indama kuntu mu'adhinan. Laytahu zabahani indama kuntu mu'adhinan. I wish he can slaughter me or kill me when I was mu'adhin. He's going to kill him now. After all this humiliation, after all these stages, don't give up your deen. You are trying very hard to please them. They will, not, will never be pleased with you until you follow their religion. So do not give up your hijab, give up your adhan, give up your salah, give up your this and that to please your master then nothing will find it, nothing will rest with you. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be proud that you are from Ummat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Be proud that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you to make you khayra ummatin, the best of this ummah and the umam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you to prostrate and make ruku' and sujood before him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our deen, Allah, is beautiful. And people, all people in the world, they are in need of our deen. They are in need of our deen. And wallahi subhanallah, a lot of people, non-Muslim, they have good idea about our deen. But we are not good example. We are not good example to show them the reality of the deen. You know, Sheikh Yusuf was talking about zawaj, about marriage. 
ما حرم الله شيئا إلا جعل مقابله عشرات الحلال when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited something and make it haram in the other hand lot of halal ten things halal people think and some people think that Islam is very difficult everything haram 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 everything haram no that's wrong idea everything in Islam is halal 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 except one two three few things is haram that's the right Everything on this land, in the world, is halal. Except something haram. Few. So the majority is halal. 95% halal. Few things are haram. The opposite of our thought. Our Islam is beautiful. Be proud with your deen and make Sahaba radiallahu anhum and Tabi'een and Tabi'i Tabi'een our role model. And mention their names in front of our kids and make special halaqa about Sahaba radiallahu anhum, young Sahaba in Sahabiyat, Aisha radiallahu anha, kanat a'lamu ahli al-ard the most knowledgeable person in the world. Even in the time of Sahaba, Ajillahu Sahaba, Abu Bakr, Umar, and great Sahabas used to ask her for fatwa. What her age was when Rasulullah Sallam passed away? 18 years old. High school kid. And she was Ummul Mu'mineen, the most knowledgeable person in the world Aisha radiallahu anha warda and I will finish my this nasiha about someone he's not sahaba he's not tabi'in he was one of general people he used to live between us he's a doctor he studied in Canada his name, Dr. Abdul Rahman Sumit. How many of you know this person? Please raise up your hands. Five, six. Dr. Abdul Rahman Sumit from Kuwait. He's from very rich family. He can live like kings and princes. He studied in Canada. But he preferred to leave Kuwait and his family and his tribe and his castle and everything in his office and clinic and to go to Africa in most difficulties in most difficult and hard villages and cities to do what? for da'wah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Listen to him. When you Google, just write in Arabic, Rajulun bi umma. A man equal nation. The first one will come, Abdul Rahman al sumit He supported 9,500 orphans in Africa. He supported 95,000 students. He built 5,700 masjid. He established 200 centers to train sisters for different jobs. He built 860 madrasa schools. He built four universities. He digged 9,500 wells. He built 102 huge Islamic centers. He printed 51 million Quran. 
and distributed in Africa. Do you know how many people converted and became Muslim because of him? Give me a number, starting from 100,000. Give me any number. One million. 1.5 million. Anything else? 11 million. 11 million people. They converted to Islam. He spent 29 years in Africa. And recently he passed away, rahmatullahi alayhi. There was a huge conference in Kuwait from all over the world. And one of the African ministers, he asked Kuwaiti people to show him Abdul Rahman Sumet's grave. He went to visit his grave and he started to weep. And no one can stop him. Weeping, weeping, crying a lot in making dua for him. And they ask him, why are you crying? He says, I was one of the orphans that Abdul Rahman Sumit took care of. I was one of the students that Abdul Rahman Sumit took care of. And because of his support, and he sent me to the university to study and learn, now I'm a minister because of this person. My dear brothers and sisters, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Be a lion and do not be a sheep. Insha'Allah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put nur and ta'thir and hidayah and guidance in your speech when you talk to others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Taqabbal Allah minna wa minkum wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.